matters. You're watching KLBK News at 6. In our summer series, American Wonders, we are exploring places that make America wonderful, from majestic natural landscapes to spectacular creations. Tonight, we board an historic train bound for the remote Great Basin Desert in northern Nevada. Its passengers aren't there to see the sunny landscapes, but instead are focused on the views after dark. Yeah, Lee Cowan takes us for a ride on the Star Train. These tracks have been here for over a hundred years, and to this day, they're about the only man-made things you'll see way out here. If you leave Ely, there's a sign that says next gas, 164 miles. And they mean 164 miles. <laughs> Mark Bassett looks the part of a railroad manager, and it's not for shows. Are you enjoying the trip? I am. I'm having a great time. Great. He's the president of the historic Nevada Northern Railway out of Ely, Nevada. A town built by this railroad that is still chugging along. It's a long way from just about anywhere now to come. And you know, that is our strength and our weakness. If we were near Las Vegas right now, it would have all been bulldozed down. But because of our remoteness, it was preserved. These trains have been running ever since copper was discovered here. There's no ore to haul anymore, but the railroad does offer passengers something as black as coal. A night ride under the stars. Just before sunset, it heads out for a three-hour ride toward Great Basin National Park, certified as one of the darkest regions in the lower 48 states. No lights are allowed. Way up ahead is park ranger Charlie Reed, racing the sun to set up telescopes before the train arrives. You just kind of let the sky do the talking for you. You don't, you don't have to do much for it because... <laughs> You, once you see it, you see it. And what the Star Train passengers are about to see still impresses even him. Does it ever get overwhelming out right here? You see well, I'll tell you, the first time I came here, first night I was out, outside my house, I looked up and I was like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was just so uh -oh, I can't find my marker stars. I can't find any of the stars I used to navigate throughout the sky because there were so many. Or so years ago, a night sky like this was oddly ordinary. But now, more than a third of the planet's population can't see the Milky Way with the naked eye. All because our world is increasingly polluted with light. The more darkness we lose, we're going to lose the universe, quite literally, and all the secrets that that universe holds. As the train creeps to a stop, passengers are greeted by the eerie glow of red lanterns. What do you see from a young man? And then, it happens. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. The view of our universe. <gasps> oh my gosh. The way most have never seen it. Oh wow. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. I've never seen the Milky Way in my life. Suzanne Tatis and her nephew, James, were spellbound. I couldn't believe my eyes. I've only seen things like that in pictures. <laughs> Sue Mittendorf came all the way from St. Louis for this view. It's just beautiful. It really is. It just makes, makes you feel so small. <laughs> it looked like fireflies gathered around a campfire. But soon it's time to board the Star Train and head back. An excursion into the dark that, for a while anyway, sheds a little light on our place in the universe. We count in Ely, Nevada. That is a train ride that uh, you don't see every day. No, you don't. And just being able to see all the stars, you know, yeah. it's great to live in a small town. You go out in the country, mm -hmm. you can see more of it. Yeah. But you don't realize how much of the light glow comes right. from big cities. I know. When you live in a big city kind of like this, you don't get to see them. But if you get a chance to go out there, yes. spectacular. Oh, it looks so great. We'll be right back.